tell me your hairstyle didn't turn out well without telling me your hairstyle didn't turn out well. What's up party people? Welcome back to my channel. We are finally doing a Best in Beauty 2022, my favorite products of the year. These are the products that I think are the cream of the crop and I've tried a lot. I know I'm kind of late on the bus to doing this. But everyone else has already done their Best in Beauty 2022, but I'm working with my own schedule and this is just how the cookie crumbled. So yeah, sit back, relax, get yourself a snack and a drink and let's just, let's just chill together and talk about my favorite products of 2022. So I couldn't do a favorites video without talking about this little doodad right here. This is a, what do you even call it? A rod curler, a heatless rod curler. I'm gonna put the link and everything down there. I promised several months back that I was gonna do a video where I show you guys how I curl my hair with this. I filmed it and I didn't like the way it turned out. So I've been planning on refilming it. So if you guys wanna see how I curl my hair with this, because I, I feel like I've really gotten the technique down pat. Let me know if, you, if you're still interested or if you've seen, you know, 200 creators already do it and you don't really care anymore. Just let me know in the comments below. This thing is such a game changer especially for those days where you just, you just want to shorten the amount of time that it takes for you to get ready especially but also just to improve the the health of your hair a little bit like if you're trying to grow your hair out save your hair from the heat and stuff this thing is so amazing it just gives the prettiest curl and it makes my hair look so smooth and soft and just very bouncy and it lasts a really long time if I do the right steps like if I really take time to use products and you know do everything correctly and also it's so good if you just want to do like an updo like if you want to do like a clip up or a ponytail or something but you don't want to go through the process of curling your hair and using heat and you know taking the time to do that just to put it up it's amazing for that and it makes your hair look so freaking cute the next thing i have is a dry shampoo so 2022 was kind of my like dry shampoo awakening and we'll get more into that with the next product but i've really been trying to cut out using dry shampoos that have propane or you know was it isobutane or whatever like the flammable parts that shouldn't be put on your skin on your hair or just in your air in general i discovered this one from heritage this is the heritage lazy day dry shampoo you can find this at walmart i think it's like 8.94 like it works just as well if not better than my batiste which has been my ride or die for gosh damn near a decade now i'm actually kind of confused as to why it's not mentioning the fact that it's propane free because I would think that'd be a pretty big claim that they would try to accentuate unless it's disguised as a different word like maybe is it dimethyl ether dimethyl ether is the first ingredient on the dry shampoo so what is that colorless gas is it like a propane alternative is it is it a safe is, is, what is it maybe wondering okay why are you giving up batiste dry shampoo number one because a lot of aerosol dry shampoos have been recalled this year and it just got me to thinking like okay this just can't be good for you let's talk about batiste dry shampoo real quick so the first ingredients on okay the top three ingredients which means that is the most concentrated in the formula is butane isobutane and propane so there were some experts that came out this year that said that propane and you know butane and isobutane what not they don't stay on your hair okay if that's the case then where are they going in your house it's going in the air you're breathing it your family's breathing it your kids are breathing it i'm not that lazy to say that it's worth it at this point so like i would rather wash my hair every single day than know like you know to knowingly spray this in the air potentially causing my family to have cancer one day like that's just it doesn't sit right with me. We're all starting to learn that, you know, even products that they say are safe aren't actually safe. Which brings me to the next thing, which is using arrowroot powder as dry shampoo. So I'm gonna put a picture of what it looks like. This is the bag that I bought on Amazon. There's different kinds, but this was like eight or nine dollars for a two pound bag of powder. And basically this is supposed to be a healthier alternative to like cornstarch or flour. So what I did, I had this little sexy hair, hair laundry bottle laying around. Like I used up the product in this, which was a powder. So this is what I used to store it in. But well, let me show you what it looks like. So it comes out like that and that's how the original sexy hair hair laundry look too. You can buy bottles on Amazon like powder bottles that spray. Um, I'm not sure how good they are like what kind of quality they are so you know buy at your own risk but I just reuse this one it works out fine. But I will say I actually like the product better when I put it in my hand first rub it together and then just go straight into my scalp. But it absorbs the oil so well it gives me some volume kind of gives me some lift to where it's not flat against my head. This is an amazing effective safer alternative to using dry shampoo and it's also a lot cheaper. So this year I discovered some new shampoo and conditioner that has made its way up to my all-time favorite products list, like not just of the year. And that is the Heritage Out of My Hair Gentle Daily Shampoo and the Heritage SOS Deep Moisture and Restore Conditioner. I've tried each of these separately, but together 
is a match made in freaking heaven. The shampoo, this makes my hair so softened and detangled. Like it feels like I've conditioned when I just use a shampoo. Like it just, it makes it feel so moisturized and nourished, but at the same time, very clean. And I feel like whenever I use this, my hair looks cleaner longer. Like it stays looking fresher longer. And the conditioner the same way. I just feel like this is just so softening and hydrating and moisturizing. And it just makes my hair super silky to where there's no tangles when I get out. Oh God, this one. I fell into the trap of Olaplex, but not the entire line, okay? I don't, here's my thing with Olaplex, okay? I've got some beef with Olaplex. So it used to be a uh, hairstylist exclusive. Like you would get it put, you know, in mixed in with your chemicals if you're getting your hair lightened or colored or whatever. Um, and there was a way to, uh, you know, kind of meld the proteins and the keratin in your hair back together to where it, you know, kind of helped prevent damage. And I feel like it went downhill whenever they made it more readily available. Like whenever they brought it to stores like Ulta and Sephora and even Amazon, and they made it more accessible to people, which should be a good thing. I feel like the greed went to their head a little bit because before it was more of a hot commodity. Like it was rare and it actually was effective because you were getting it done and getting it used on you less frequently. Hey, think about this. If it actually worked, would you need 12 products to get the benefits from it? But anyway, I've got two Olaplex products in here, so. There I am, sounding crazy. So this is the Olaplex number six bond smoother. This is the leave-in reparative styling cream and the number seven bonding oil. And I'm not even gonna sit here and act like I know exactly what each of these do because like all these numbers, the number three, the number four, the number five, the number 50, I do think that the number seven bonding oil is supposed to be used as a heat protectant. Like it's supposed to be used obviously for frizziness and smoothing the hair and all that stuff. But I also think it's got, I think it's like up to 450 degree heat protection. I could be wrong about that. But when I first used it, I just used it by itself. I, I feel like it kind of weighed my hair down. I just didn't really like it. And the leave-in cream, again, didn't really do anything for me when I first used it. Like it was okay, but I had others in my collection that I felt worked just as good, if not better. So I found that the magic combination is using them together. So I'll put like maybe a dime size amount of the cream in my hand, and then I'll go in and tap out like up to six drops of the oil, mix it together, put that through my wet hair as soon as I wash it. And when I style it, like when I blow dry it, when I curl it, no matter what I do, like it just makes my hair look so much more smooth and frizz free and it makes it feel so much healthier. Another leave-in cream that I think is honestly just as good. I mean, it doesn't really have the whole bonding claims as Olaplex, but Amica Supernova Moisture and Shine Cream, this stuff is so good. I fell in love with this this year. Like I actually discovered it a while back this year, but I started using this with my uh, rod, my heatless rod curler. I think this is one of the main reasons my hair, like when I take it down, looks so just smooth and just shiny and frizz free. Like it just looks so porcelain. Like it looks like glass. So this like as a leave-in cream works just as good in my opinion as the Olaplex one. So sometimes I mix the oil with the Amica. It's still pretty pricey though. Amica is a pretty pricey high-end brand. Actually, I do have an Olaplex alternative, like something that works just as well for me. This is one of the only oils I found that doesn't weigh my hair down. It does everything that you want an oil to do without any of the negative side effects. The weighing of the hair, the, the limp noodle that is your hair strands. This stuff is amazing. This is the Ellipse Hair Vitamin uh, Paraton Ramboot Roos... Mm, I am butchering all those words. Here's what it looks like. Okay, it's from the brand Ellipse. Yeah, it just comes in these little capsules and you just cut the little top off. I don't know if the capsule makes it more potent. Like maybe it makes the oils work more effectively. I'm not really sure. It still has worked better than almost every oil I've tried. So it doesn't have necessarily the bonding ability or the heat protecting ability as a, the Olaplex one, but at night, like after a shower, or if you just wanna use something and not have to worry about Oh my God, I, that, that is a little tiny bottle that's not gonna last me a long time. Then I would highly recommend this. This works phenomenally. So let's talk about skincare now. So I'm not the beacon of good skin. It's been a pretty bad year for me for acne. Like I just have been struggling really, really bad. I feel like I'm just now starting to see results with my acne. I'm not gonna say that they're gonna work for everyone with acne because you know, I feel like that's a big mistake for someone that has acne to say, oh, you need this right now. Go out and buy this right now. If you have cystic acne, if you have hormonal acne, blah, 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 this will 100% work for you because that's not the case. I tried a lot of products this year that people said would work for me and it didn't. So it's all trial and error. So please keep that in mind. The first thing that I tried is this vitamin E oil. So this is the Oh, what is that word? Coera? Is that what it's called? Coera 100% pure vitamin E oil. It's 30,000 IU. This is like 
a band-aid for my skin overnight. I can put this on at night and when I wake up the next day, not only does my face feel extremely moisturized and nourished and soft, I feel like my skin is kind of like kick-started through the hyperpigmentation stage. Like, and it's just, it's a faster healing process. So it's been like a week. Um, I forgot some stuff and I cannot believe I forgot this product right here because I've raved about this literally almost the entirety of 2022 and that is the Julep Beauty Invisible Sunscreen Gel SPF 40 and it's literally clear on your skin okay so it doesn't matter what your skin tone is how deep how light you are but not only that it is literally glass skin in a tube. Seriously, the most beautiful, dewy, juicy, glowy, radiant skin of your life. It's so moisturizing, so hydrating. Like, it really does not feel like a sunscreen at all. It doesn't smell like a sunscreen. Not only that, it also wears really, really well under makeup. Truly one of the best sunscreens I've ever tried. So this next thing is actually something that I did talk about in the original video, but I lost it for like five days at the time. So I didn't have the product in my hand to talk about it and actually show you. But my little girl found it like two days ago. And that is the Aroma Guru Tea Tree Rollerball. So this is a Dollar Tree for $1.25. This is by far the best spot treatment I've ever tried. I do want to preface this by saying that I am currently taking spirolactone. I'm taking 100 milligrams of spirolactone, which is a pill, and then also tretinoin. I'm on 0.025% tretinoin, I believe. So I've been on the tretinoin three or four times a week on top of the spirolactone, and I am still, okay, it is January 17th of 2023. So I've been using it for November, so three months now, and I'm still not to a point where I see any, any kind of change. I'd seen on TikTok a while back that tea tree oil was kind of making a comeback or like on a certain side of TikTok. I realized like, oh, I've got this in my in my bathroom. Like, let me pull that out and try it. But I was kind of leery of trying it because you don't want to put straight tea tree oil on your face. But I started looking at the ingredients and it's first off, it's 100% pure tea tree oil and then sweet almond oil. So there's two ingredients and the sweet almond oil acts as that carrier oil to kind of dilute it a little bit to where it's not so irritating. Oh my God. Only since I started using this has my acne finally started to heal. If I were watching this video, I would think, well, you know, you're also on spirolactone. You're doing other things. Whenever I stop using it and or lose it and just can't use it, I break out. The same intensity that I've always broken out. There are so many nights that I'll put this on when I have a raised bump or I've popped it, it's really red. And when I wake up the next day, the bumps are flattened. I'm left with like a little red spot. It's $1.25, is well worth the shot. So this next product is one that I actually found back in like November. So it's pretty new to me. But for me to put this, like something this new into this video says a lot about it. This is the number seven instant results nourishing hydrating mask. So it's technically for dry to very dry skin, which I would consider my skin, I would, my skin's pretty normal. Like it's not too dry, it's not too oily. It's pretty smack dab in the middle nowadays. This stuff, Oh my God. I've never tried anything that so quickly makes my skin feel so moisturized. It's one of those kind of masks that you wear up to 10 minutes. So it's super quick. Like you don't have to sit in it for 30 minutes, an hour. Like you can put this on in the morning before you're putting your makeup on. When you wash it off, it makes your skin feel like you've got your serum on, your oil, your moisturizer, like your entire skincare routine. It just softens your skin. It makes it feel so nourished. It makes it kind of gleam. Like it makes it have a really nice radiance and it does it within 10 minutes. So. It's pretty freaking amazing. So I have an eye cream or an eye gel is actually what it is. And I'm never someone that recommends eye creams or eye gels for the most part. Like I would say, I would say 98% of the time I feel like eye creams are a total gimmick. They're a waste. And this stuff, is my favorite this is my favorite eye gel that i've ever used this is the good molecules urban mate wake up eye gel so this is just a caffeinated eye gel that's supposed to you know energize the area kind of tighten and lift it and you know typically i would read that claim or i would hear someone say that and just be like it's an eye gel people come on i will put this on and i'm not kidding within I would say no more than eight to 10 minutes, 15 tops. My eyes look more lifted, like I have depuffed. Uh, my dark circles are minimized somehow. Like it's not like it's tinted or anything, but it just, it makes my entire face wake up and come alive. We're gonna go ahead and move on to the makeup. So the first thing I wanted to talk about is one that I'm actually bummed about because it's already been discontinued, but I don't feel like it's fair to make this video without talking about this, even though it's, you can't get it anymore. You might be able to find it on eBay or Mercari or if you see See it somewhere, buy it, buy them all. Or at least let me know where you can buy it because I need some backup. But that is the LA Girl Sunkiss Glow Eyeshadow Palette. And this is the eyeshadow palette 
of the decade for me. The color stories from light to dark, from shimmer to matte, everything about this is perfect for me for every day. Like I can create almost anything with this or at least like this is a good foundation. Like this is a perfect neutral slash slightly warm everyday palette that's just so wearable. But the formula, the formula is where I feel like this is the most special because I've never tried a drugstore formula that melds into each other. Like the blend of this is so high quality like it really performs like a high-end palette so this year was a really good year for me for finding setting sprays really discovering ones that do a great job at improving the longevity by night time like by you know a 12 14 hour 15 hour wear day my makeup still looks just as good so this is the elizabeth mott thank me later makeup setting spray you can find this on amazon it is just such a high quality like high performing setting spray like everyone talks about the charlotte tilbury one but in my opinion this works just as good if not better milani makeup last setting spray i think also made a pretty big splash this year like a, a re-splash back into the industry like I feel like it kind of died out for a little while and then it you know it's been revamped but this truly is another one of those that makes my makeup last so long and another one that I tried this year that I actually have in my empties bin that I'm too lazy to go get is a Revlon Colorstay setting spray one that really improves the wear of everything I wear with it and also melds the layers together so that's what I'm looking for no one talks about it Highly recommend it. So the Maybelline Instant Age Rewind 4-in-1 Glow Makeup is a beautiful product no matter how you use it, okay? The original shade, I use the shade Light for my skin tone, and this is just a beautiful primer, a beautiful skin tint. More specifically, the medium shade is what I've been loving as a liquid bronzer. Oh my god this is the shade medium which is just so subtle and natural on me like it just it takes very little effort to blend this out it just it works so perfectly for my skin tone but for days where i'm more tan or i just want more of like a you know bam in your face kind of bronze look i'll go with medium deep which is a tad bit darker they're so long wearing because they do act like primers the blend beautiful the shades the finish everything about these is so pretty as liquid bronzers the believe beauty eyeshadow palette in the shade nearly new this isn't just a favorite of the year like if i were to do a favorite eyeshadow palette of all time video this would be in it because this is just such a wearable everyday palette for me like it's just one of those that every single time I wear it especially if I take pictures I look at myself and I'm just like oh my god what did you wear that day it really flatters my eyes my skin tone it's just it's neutral but it's also got a little punch to it like it's got some pizzazz and this shade right here this shimmer oh my god like this is just one of those that every eye color every skin tone whatever you're trying to match it with it just looks good with so much along with that the ColourPop cream soda press powder eyeshadow palette i don't think this is available anymore either i don't know why like ColourPop is becoming one of those brands that again just discontinues all the amazing products that has like veteran lovers of it this color story is again just like the nearly nude eyeshadow palette from believe beauty this is one of those that if I don't want to think about it, like if I just want to put something on, I'm not trying to match anything because I don't know what I'm going to wear, but I want to make sure that I look glam and my eyes pop and my skin pops and just everything goes well. This is one of those palettes I used to do that. Like this shade right here, this like peachy bronzy shade. Oh my God. Like it's so like soft and high intensity, metallic, very wet and sheeny looking. It's got like gold orange glitter, but also the champagne in here is just like, look at this, the best champagne tone ever why they're getting rid of this i have no freaking clue primer i'm pretty picky when it comes to primer honestly there's not many that i tried that i can really say yep that really makes a difference in how my makeup wears but this one it's so basic like i look at this i'm just like oh it's so boring it makes my makeup last so well my makeup looks fresher longer my skin looks more youthful it looks more plump and that is a number seven lift and luminate primer look at this okay it's the most basic ass vanilla kind of formula like it's just there's nothing special to it it looks like your typical like oh i'm a hydrating primer i don't really do anything that a skincare product wouldn't do kind of product but no on the skin it really doesn't do a whole lot in terms of like making your skin look extra juicy and extra moisturized i mean i guess it does to a degree but like it's not one that is like glass skin but you see the effect of it with the wear of your makeup i use it all the time and i never am disappointed by it so good stuff all right guys it's a little bit later and it is now everybody's bedtime but mine so we are moving over to a powder puff holding my lapel mic so yes we are very fancy here so next up is a rando but a goodie okay but do not let the basicness of this product fool you because let me tell you it's amazing this is the ulta beauty matte eye primer in the shade nude i have the trial size the original size is like 12 dollars at ulta it's really hard to find a good eye primer that actually conceals almost all of them on the market 
or translucent, which in my opinion is stupid. This is the definition of concealing eye primer that not just improves the wear of your eyeshadows and really allows you to start from scratch with the color, like the vividness of them. If you just want to put on some mascara, maybe some eyeliner, like no eyeshadow, it doesn't look caked on. Like it doesn't look like you put on a heavy concealer that looks too obvious and you know, just like whoa, she's got concealer on. It's like a velvet kind of texture and it conceals the perfect amount. Like I feel like this is one that it's not so opaque and so pigmented to where if you have a deeper skin tone, you couldn't match it or if you're lighter, either way. So this was a year for me for kind of bouncing back into using eyebrow powders. And my favorite eyebrow powder to date is this Koki Cosmetics Brow Kit in the shade Blonde. And this is the perfect, not just the perfect formula, but the perfect shade for like my color eyebrow. So going along with that, I have a brow pencil. This is the She Glam Skinny Brow Pencil and I don't know the shade name because it's not on here, but I'm pretty sure it's like ash brown or something like that. It'll be linked below. I'll look back at my She Glam order. It's just a double ended brow pencil kind of thing. You know, pretty typical. It looks just like Anastasia Brow Wiz. Just, it does the job so fast. I don't have to spend 10 minutes on my brows. Like I just film in really quickly. There's a lot of brow pencils I try where they're too waxy. And if you go over the same spot too much, trying to fill in a sparse area that it just turns like what just starts getting really waxy and doesn't actually do anything and this is the perfect like pigment to creamy to waxy ratio to where it just makes it very very fast and the color works perfectly for me i've been a sucker for the maybelline lifter glosses so i've got a bunch of shades but the ones i've got right now are moon which is what i'm wearing right now and then also ice um, there's another one that i have and i can't think of the name it's in my purse but it's, I'll link it below too. It's that nice like plumping, plumping, AKA cooling, tingling kind of sensation lip gloss, which I think is so just soothing. It's not so tingly and cooling to where if you have a sensitivity to that, that you're just gonna be like, oh my God, my lips are burning. But also the longevity of these is incredible. Like if you put this on top of any lipstick, it's gonna make it wear 10 times longer. They're overrated, but they're so freaking good. And I actually do understand this one. And it's always a toss up between those and the Milani Keep It Full Lip Plumpers. My favorite shade to soft rose like you'll see me wearing this in a ton of videos like if you check the description box where I do like little makeup breakdowns I'm wearing this in the majority of my videos because it just it works out with everything and again it's that same kind of like it's not too opaque but it's also not too sheer like you can wear it by itself it has that cooling tingling sensation you know it's a plumping gloss I actually feel uh, do I feel that way? I kind of feel like this one lasts a little bit longer on my lips, like without reapplying. I could be wrong on that. Like they're pretty similar. And again, put them on top of anything and it lasts a very long time or wear it by itself and it lasts a good amount of time too. So let's stick to the lip theme real quick. So again, another product that I really didn't want to like because it is so overrated and just trendy products make me cringe. But the Maybelline Superstay Vinyl Ink Lipsticks are truly amazing. Okay. This is what liquid lipstick should have been from the beginning. I will say I've heard people say that these last like all day long or like eight hours, 10 hours, they, they last through eating and drinking. In my experience, they don't. That could be because I usually wear them with a gloss on top. So the gloss is going to make it break down faster. But there have been numerous occasions where I haven't eaten or drank anything for like six hours or more. When, you know, whenever I do weddings and stuff, I usually wear these. And I've had numerous people be like, wait a minute, what are you wearing? You haven't touched up your lips the entire time you been here and usually like nine out of ten times it's this with either the Milani or Maybelline lip gloss on top. Something I didn't realize when I first started using these and for the longest time is that you really have to shake them. Can you hear that? Do it for a few seconds at least um, because I think that actually kind of activates a formula and makes it more long wearing and it kind of mixes up the ingredients to where like you get the opacity but also the wear. On the back of my hand right now I didn't shake them and they look more glossy and more sheer but on the lips they I mean they're kind of they're glossy at first but it kind of goes away over time and you're left with more of like a, a cream semi matte kind of finish but yeah they're definitely not this sheer on the lips. But another one that no one ever talks about is one that I have raved about over the years like this is definitely one of my favorite powders of all time. This is the Hard Candy Chilling Wonder Powder. If a foundation won't wear well with this, it ain't gonna wear well. Kind of blurs over all your imperfections. Super smooth, super finely milled. It just blurs over your pores, softens your skin. It's one of those that doesn't look overly matte. It doesn't suck the life out of your skin and all the radiance and luminosity, especially if you're wearing a glowy finished foundation. And I went to Walmart last week and noticed that they have a different package for this. I'm pretty sure it's the same product, just new packaging. So I hope they didn't mess with the formula. One of the best powders 
ever. All right, let's talk mascara, shall we? I have always been on the hunt for mascaras that make me feel comfortable in wearing them just by themselves. I hate when I'm just wearing mascara and I see through my lashes. Like I hate when I see my eyelid skin. You guys know what I'm talking about? Like I don't feel like a lot of people have this issue or maybe it's just a matter of like what I've got to work with. Like just the density of my lashes, like what they need. The number one mascara of the year for me, okay? And this is a big spot, okay? The award goes to Milani Highly Rated Anti-Gravity Mascara. This stuff is the shiz. This is one of those I can put on by itself and it's so thickening and volumizing and just it gives so much fullness towards the base of the lashes that it looks like I've got eyeliner on and I can't see through my lashes. Like it's just such a good balanced formula. It holds up so well. Like there's no smearing, flaking, smudging, puddling, nothing like that. But another one that I love this year was the Elf Lash It Loud Mascara. And I will say I like the Milani one better in terms of like wearing it by itself, but this is one that's travel status. Actually, I wanna make a video of like travel status makeup because what that means is that whenever I travel I'm typically someone that packs two or three of everything two or three mascaras two or three foundations concealers powders because you know it's kind of like you know picking out clothes for a trip you don't know what you're gonna wake up and feel like wearing that day like you may feel like wearing a dress or you may feel like wearing uh jeans but this is one that I've traveled with by itself with nothing else it works amazing for the top and the lower so I don't have to pack two different ones but it's got a one like the benefit their real mascara which I used to love um and that's that's really good for getting in the inner and outer corner for the lower lashes. The bristles are prickly enough to where it really separates everything. I trust it. So it's like a trustworthy travel status approved mascara. Hi, I'm back. So the next thing I have that I forgot about the other day is the number seven, the full 360 ultra mascara. It is one of those that gives me such huge just dramatic, super, super black, full voluminous long lashes. Like it gives me that very, you know, eyes wide open, doll eye kind of effect. Very false lashy, okay? Very false lashy. Doesn't smear, smudge, transfer, nothing like that. We don't rave about or recommend anything that does those kind of things and has wear issues. Builds up in layers very, very well. And the wand is one of those that just really pushes the product towards the base of your lashes to where it almost gives you like a tight line, waterline effect. So I know that a lot of people like to do that, especially people with smaller eyes or mature eyelids or you know not a lot of eyelid space or whatever but tight lining doesn't last so I just I, it's not something I ever recommend. Another one that I've really enjoyed this year is the Essence 16 hour cover and last powder foundation. I'd initially tried it as a powder foundation. I think I tried it up here but I actually like this better in conjunction with other loose powders. So I heard a makeup artist a while back on TikTok say that if you're not setting with two different powders like a loose powder and a pressed powder you're doing it wrong because apparently the combination is what really improves the wear of your makeup and keeps it on there from start to finish. I started using this one as a second step to my loose powder and oh my god it's just it's so skin blurring and skin softening like this is literally like photoshop in a what is this? Compact. It's just super, super smoothing. All right, now for the PS to resist don't. So I'm gonna say that real fast because I don't really know what those words are. Um, let's talk about concealer and then we're gonna move on to foundation. For concealer, the Julep Cushion Complexion 5-in-1 Skin Perfector with Turmeric. I'm in the shade 140 Buff. This was a random find on Amazon and I started reading the reviews and the reviews are amazing on this, but there's a lot of people on there talking about how they use this as a foundation and how beautiful it is and just flawless and full coverage and whatnot. And the first day I tried this, I used it as a foundation and learned that if you need coverage, you will go through this rather quickly. 0.16 ounces of product in here. So typically the amount that you get in a foundation is one ounce. So I'm just, this is like what, 15 to 20 bucks. I'm not using this as a foundation, but as a concealer is where this really shines. For me, it's just so skin-like and it really unifies with the area. I get very minimal creasing, if any at all. I don't have to set it with a powder for it to last a long time. It gives me good coverage when I build it up. I usually have to do about two layers, sometimes three, if I have really dark circles that day. I do get full coverage with it and it just, it holds up so well like, it's just so skin like like it moves with my skin it's natural it's not too matte it's not too drying it's just a really really good concealing product the Catrice true skin high cover concealer I am just obsessed with this this is one of the best concealers like this is my in my top five for sure it's more full coverage than the julep one I will say that like this is more of your traditional like full coverage concealer but it's not drying it's not overly matte like it's not like Tarte Shape Tape or elf camo concealer where it just looks like pancake makeup 
under the eyes in my opinion. It just, again, works kind of with the movement under your eyes. I almost never get creasing with this. I don't have to powder it. Like I can do my little setting spray hack. I'm gonna put it up there if you wanna check out what I'm talking about. This is a game changer, no powder. And all of these, all three of these I'm talking about today will hold up beautifully under my eyes. I don't get crepey. Oh my God, one of the best concealers. And this is also travel status. Oh, uh, between this one and the Catrice one, I don't know which one's my top favorite, but it's a close call. This is the number seven Lift and Illuminate Serum Concealer. When I tell you that this is one of the most flexible in terms of like how it wears and the most breathable formulas for under the eyes I've ever tried, I mean it. It's like a medium coverage starting out, but it's buildable. You can build it up and it doesn't look cakey. It never starts looking thick. It's very, very long wearing. Like this is one that I can put on early in the morning and not take my makeup off for 10, 12, 14, 16 hours and it never looks bad, okay? I've never had this concealer look bad under my eyes. It never looks dry, crepey. Now, obviously my degree of fine lines and stuff is different than someone that's got more mature skin, but I'm pretty confident that someone with mature skin that does have a lot more fine lines and wrinkles than I do will still appreciate this. I'm sure a lot of you guys are thinking, where's the foundation? Did you not have any foundation favorites? Oh girl, I saved best for last. The Ulta Complexion Crush Foundation. This foundation got tested through the ringer. I'm actually wearing it right now and it's a very medium coverage and I feel like it's pretty buildable. So if you want full coverage, you could get it. I tested this one mainly in the summer like in the the dead of summer like june july it was like hot and there were numerous times when i would go outside and it would be 102 degrees and i would just be sitting there roasting like a thanksgiving turkey i would go back inside and expect my face to be just melted off like even after i realized how good this was and that this will like this is super long wearing and it somehow holds up through sweat and humidity and heat and oil and all that stuff like i would still go inside and be like ooh this is the day, like this is the day that I'm gonna look, I'm gonna look like a bag of trash. Every single time I would go inside and look at my face, I would be stunned. I would have a little bit of some sunglass marks on my nose, nothing even major though, considering like this isn't claiming to be like a super, you know, long wearing 24 hour foundation or anything. It would be pretty minimal. Like even as it starts wearing off as foundations will eventually, it's one that it never looks bad. The Touch and Soul Advanced Real Moisture Liquid Foundation. This is another random find from Amazon. Like I was just perusing Amazon one day and found this one. It had a lot of reviews and stuff. And this is such a beautiful formula. This is just glowy, glassy skin, but with longevity. I think I'm gonna keep it kind of short and sweet on that one because I'm actually planning and in the process of doing a top foundations video. So last but not least, another foundation rediscovery for me for this year was a Catrice HD Liquid Coverage Foundation. So I actually went back to using this back in the summer when I tested out full face waterproof makeup. Again, check it out up here. So yeah, this was my waterproof foundation that I tested, especially where it's been a really bad year for me for acne and really trying to hone in on foundations that cover my acne without like masking my skin. This is one that gives me the coverage that I'm looking for without the cake. Like it's, it's so liquidy and watery that it feels like it's gonna give you super light coverage. But as soon as I put this on my face and start blending it out, it's the erasure of the imperfections. Like it is magical. Now I will say they did reformulate it recently to include niacinamide. So I do have a comparison of the old formula versus the new one with niacinamide. So I'm gonna link it up here. Make sure you check it out. You might be kind of surprised. So yeah, that is it for my favorites of 2022. This was a very long video. I hope I can condense it enough to where it's actually watchable. But if not, I hope you guys enjoyed it. Let me know in the comments below if you wanna see more favorites videos like this throughout the year. If you guys wanna see these monthly or something, then let me know. What were your favorite products of 2022? Whether it be makeup, up, skincare, hair care. Give this video a big old, <laughs> my clickers behind. Thumbs up if you enjoyed the video. Here's a couple more things for you to check out next. Just venture around, make yourself at home. Subscribe if you're not already and turn the notification bell on to always see my stuff. Everything that's on my face right now will be listed below in the description box and a full on makeup breakdown as well as all the products I've talked about today. And I will see you guys in the next one. Mwah.